Good morning. It's a um, time for our um, usual announcement for the people in the congregation. So if any of you have an announcement, please come up and make it. Ladies, LW Mail meeting. Uh, we're, we're going to Jackson this Saturday. Be here by 8 o'clock, please. So the ones that are going to Jackson, Tennessee, please be here by 8 o'clock. Good morning and welcome to beautiful Savior, especially uh, any visitors we have with us this morning, especially a big welcome to all the uh, computer friends and family. We have a good crowd this morning, thanks to you guys. So. <laughs> uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we definitely rejoice today in the baptism of Eden and Cole, so, so wonderful to have you all here this morning. Um, just a couple uh, announcements from me, um, so bear with me. Uh, one is that uh, we're not going to have a reception uh, for the pewter, uh, pewters today. Uh, we will have one at a later date. Uh, because she was born a little early, the doctor uh, wants uh, her to not be exposed to too many people at once. Uh, so we're just going to postpone the reception just a little bit, but we'll still celebrate with them at a later date, uh, certainly. This Saturday is the Olive Branch Festival. Uh, in, in Olive Branch, of course, at the city park. And we're going to have a church tent handing out information about our church, um, about the homeschool co-op, and about uh, everything that it means to be Lutheran, um, along with some free water bottles and popcorn. So uh, please sign up on the sign-up sheet if you haven't signed up for a time to come join us for that from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we'll also need a little help before and after for setup and cleanup. So uh, be sure to sign up and uh, come and help us out and meet the community uh, and talk to everyone uh, at the Olive Branch Festival. Lutheranism 101 is resuming on Wednesday, May 4th, uh, so the first Wednesday in May. And uh, if you'd like to come to that, uh, we're just going through what it means to, to be Lutheran topic by topic. We've been doing that for a while uh, before our Lenten midweeks. Uh, then let me know if you prefer 6.30 instead of 7. We were doing it at 7, but all of our Lenten midweeks were at 6.30, and people seem to like that, okay? Um, and so if 6.30 works better, better for you, let me know about that so we can change the time. Um, I also want to draw your attention to the, the remodeling project. Um, there's a board out there that you can see. Uh, that is open for giving. We have designated funds set up now. Um, we do already have some money given to that. I haven't had a chance to color in the thermometer, but uh, but be sure to go ahead and give for that. And there is a couple ways to give online now. So there's the bank account, which has no fee involved, and you can do that through our website. Uh, we also have it set up to give by debit or credit card now. All that information is in your in your bulletin and on the sign up there. Um, so uh, make make sure to uh, be given to that. Um, extra to your ordinary giving, extra to your ordinary giving. So don't take away from your tithe to give to the fellowship hall. Uh, this is an extraordinary gift, extraordinary. Um, also, I did just want to point out the uh, fellowship registries, uh, which have reappeared. Uh, they went away for COVID years ago and uh, we forgot about them, but they've reappeared. The little red books at the end of your row, uh, be sure to fill those out so we can keep Good attendance records and uh, know who's joined us and if you're a visitor and you uh, put your address in the registry book then we'll send you a card uh, thanking you for worshiping with us today so be sure to fill those out I think that is all the announcements I have um, we are still down in organist so we're running the service off the iPad um, the prelude today that the iPad people sent us is three minutes so We'll listen to our three-minute prelude uh, now as we prepare our hearts uh, for worship before the opening hymn. God's blessings on your worship. Please rise for our opening hymn.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How are you named? Eva Nicole Pluger. Eva Nicole received the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart. We mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world to the flood. And according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, but led your, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold the Eva. According to your boundless mercy, and bless her with the true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin and evil, which has been inherited from Adam, and which she has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope. So that with all the believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The sponsors. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction, and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples of them in the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve even at all as sponsors of the Christian faith? Yes, with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said, to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for to such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter. And he took them up in his arms, and he put his hands on them, and he blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out to this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Even a cold. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, yes. I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, yes. I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. 
Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. Do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. <coughs> Even Nicole, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Even Nicole received this white garment show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all your sin. So shall you stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. <clears throat> and receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven and the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. The congregation may stand. <coughs> Heavenly Father, you sent your own Son into the, this world as the child of the Virgin Mary. We thank you for the life of this child who trusted to our care. Help us remember that we are all your children, and so love and nurture her that she may obtain to the full stature intended for her in your eternal kingdom. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord and giver of life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child and upon all our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism, that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Newborn infants, Alleluia. Long for the spiritual milk of the word, Alleluia. Sing aloud to God our Savior. Shout for joy to God our Savior. In distress you called and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. 
with honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. He who fashions the hearts of them all 
and observes all their deeds. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Behold, May deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul prays to the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him, because we, because we trust in his holy name. Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is true. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has a testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe in God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Latin name for this Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter, quasi modo geniti. And as much as that sounds like a funny looking lizard that you might see at the Memphis Zoo if you go and visit, it's actually the Latin phrase for the beginning of our intro it today, like newborn infants. Like newborns, that's what quasi modo geniti means, like newborns. And it's a quote from 1 Peter 2 2, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up into salvation. That is the theme of today, like newborns, that we should be like newborns in our faith. The disciples, especially Thomas, struggle with this. They are not like children in their faith. They are not the most trusting they could be. And it might be weird to think about faith as being like newborns. It might be weird to think about faith being like newborns if you think of the faith as an intellectual pursuit, as just a set of doctrines that must be believed and held on to, that you must understand and then confess, or an intellectual pursuit in this way, that the faith would be like, that is something you can only have once you are old enough to intellectually process and comprehend the emotions that you have about God. If you think of the faith as an intellectual pursuit, either about level of comprehension or about sets of doctrines, then think of it, thinking of the faith being like newborns doesn't make really any sense at all, since newborns neither have an intellectual comprehension of doctrines or their emotions. But I think there is a much more biblical and a simpler definition of faith than intellectual pursuit. And that is honesty about dependency. Honesty about our dependency. Faith being honest that we need God's grace and mercy. Faith being honest that we are his creatures. And he is the creator and sustainer of all things, and everything that we have comes from him. Faith that we are sinners, and that Jesus alone is the Savior. Faith that we are easily confused, but that the Bible, the word alone, is clear. And newborns are great about this. It makes so much sense for them. Think about how honest newborns are about their dependence. And just look at how dependent they really are. Look at their limitations. For the first three months, a newborn cannot see clearly in front of them. They can barely see in color. It's mostly just contrasting shades of black and white. And they cannot really see, for the first three months, more than a foot in front of them. They can't even see. They can't talk to tell you what they need. They can't walk to go get to be where they want to be. They can't run to get out of danger if they are in danger. They cannot feed themselves. And they cannot go to the bathroom on their own, much less clean it up on their own, as any parent knows. And that is why they are so honest about their dependency. That's why they cry. That is their honesty that they need your help. That's the only thing that they can do. They can cry. And any good parent also knows that a newborn will sometimes be overly honest about their dependence, especially at about 3 a.m. in the morning. But nonetheless, nonetheless, good parents do not hesitate to give them what they need. They do not hesitate to give their dependents exactly what they need to nurture them and to provide for them, to give them all the love and all the care and all the blessing and all the mercy and all the grace that they need, no matter how dependent they are. They simply provide. They do not wait until the baby can intellectually process that they are a child and that they have parents who are supposed to care and provide for them in a certain way and what those ways are. 
Good parents do not wait to give to their children until they can confess with their mouth what emotions they feel about their parents and about that relationship. They simply provide, simply provide everything that they need. And today Peter commands this of us, that we be like these newborns, that we be like prime newborns who are honest and longing for the care that the Father provides. Honest about how dependent we are on his word and on his sacrament. Honest about how dependent we are on that pure spiritual milk that he gives. And that is a good reminder for all of you. For as you all grow older from the time you yourself were infants, it is easier and easier to forget that you are the creatures and that God is the creator and sustainer of all things and that you must be like newborns. You are like newborns. You cannot have anything without God giving it to you. You cannot feed yourselves. You need God to send the rain and give the sun to give the growth to the plants and the animals that we eat. You cannot provide for yourself a place to live without God giving growth to the trees that build the shelters that we inhabit. And most of all, you cannot live without Him. And not just live in a physical way, but live spiritually without Him. You are sinners, and without His grace, without His mercy, without His forgiveness, His passion, and His resurrection, you would be dead in your trespasses. You would be dead in your sin. And worse than that, your sinful nature, as you grow older and older, from that infant stage every day, it tempts you with the opposite of faith. It tempts you to lie about your dependency, to think that by my money, by my job, by my ways, by my intellect, by my emotional processing capability, I can provide for myself. I know what's going on. I know what I need. I know what God needs to give me, and how he needs to give it to me, and when he needs to give it to me. I know. That is the nature of sin and pride, growing older and older every day. And you can see all those realities at play in the gospel today. On the evening of the, that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked for fear of the Jews, the disciples were hiding in fear. The disciples feared man rather than God. They didn't trust God to provide everything that he had promised he would provide on account of his resurrection. They thought that they could provide for themselves. They thought that they could lock the doors and provide for themselves security. They thought that since Jesus was gone, they could do it on their own or they needed to do it on their own and that they didn't have the help of their loving father. And of course, there was also Thomas, who was not even with them, hiding away somewhere else by himself. Wasn't it so great last week? Wasn't it so glorious last week on Easter morning when the women went to the tomb and they saw Jesus and they professed and they proclaimed the resurrected Lord and they were astonished at his gifts? Wasn't it great last week in all the churches? The pews were full, the brown chairs were full of people, record high Sundays everywhere, but then, if it wasn't for the Peter family, <laughs> the chairs being emptier this week than they were last week. The people hiding, not actually taking to heart the account of the resurrection, going back to a lukewarm thought about attendance and about the need for the spir pure spiritual milk given here, Sunday in, Sunday out. Not really believing in the greatness of the gifts that Christ wants to give to his disciples, to his people. Not being honest about our great dependence on them throughout our lives. And of course today we have Thomas. Thomas, who is the classic example of lying about his dependence. 
The classic example of making demands that God do things His way and not the way that God would simply give them. The classic example of not being like a newborn, simply receiving what it is given. Rather than taking the milk offered to him, he makes this demand. He says, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and unless I put my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never, never believe. And that's a sign of weak faith. Instead of longing for the milk that the word gives, instead of longing for the truth that Jesus preaches to him, and that the disciples preach to him, he makes a demand that it be done in a certain way. And I can't help today with the baptism of Eva, I can't help today but to think sadly of our friends in the American Evangelical and Baptist churches who think the same way about baptism. That it must be done in a certain way, and that it must be done at a certain time. That it must be done with immersion, even though that's not what the word baptize means. That it must be done when the child is able to emotionally comprehend their feelings about God or when they're able to intellectually understand what it means for them. But the word is clear. We baptize every one of you, every one of you. This promise is for you and your children, Peter says. And Jesus himself says it more clearly than all, let the little children come to me. But instead there are those who will say, unless they can say it for themselves, unless they can decide it for themselves, unless they can say this is something they want. But Jesus urges them, he urges us, he urges you, he urges all of us, do not become unbelieving, but believing. Do not stand on the edge of faith, doubting Jesus' words, saying, maybe it would be better if he did it in this way so that I can really believe it. Maybe it would be better if I could see it in this way so that I could really comprehend it. Don't stand mildly on the edge of God's word, wanting proofs, wanting things to be done in your way. Simply receive. Simply believe what it says to be like a newborn. That newborns are, in fact, the sign of faith. Newborns, infants, little children, they are the image of faith in the Bible. And they receive the milk, and the milk is given. The good news is this, that Jesus knows our weakness in this regard. When he comes to the disciples, and when he comes to Thomas, even though they are weak in faith, even though they stand on the edge of faith, looking maybe to be unbelieving, but still retaining a little bit of believing. Even though they don't deserve it, he says to them, peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. It's repeated twice to them. And then when Thomas comes, even though Thomas had been hiding, and even though Thomas made these demands, again, peace be with you. Even though he doesn't deserve it, he gets to touch the wounds. And even though you don't deserve it, he also gives you real, tangible, touchable gifts, just like he gave to Thomas. Real gifts to which he attaches his word in order to give you the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness and all of the gifts and all of the blessings which you need. And just like a loving parent, just like a good parent, he does not hesitate to give them to you. He does not wait a moment whenever you cry out in longing to come to you with his baptism, to come to you with his supper, to come to you with his word, to come to you with his absolution. For in these waters, in these blessed waters of holy baptism, he gives you and he touches you with the water flowing out from his side. He gives to you new life in Christ, resurrection in Christ, death to sin permanently, and a resurrection to new life in him. And like he says to the apostles today, to those in the apostolic ministry, receive the Holy Spirit, receive the ordination that comes from Christ. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And you hear that when you confess your sins, when you receive absolution from the mouth of the pastor, a real tangible gift you can hear with your ears, you can see with your eyes. 
real tangible gifts, real blood at this altar flowing from his side, from the same wound that Thomas touched for you to eat, for you to drink, to commune with him. Real tangible gifts, he does not hesitate to give them to you. And he says to Thomas, Blessed are you who have not seen, and yet have believed. Blessed are you who have not seen, and yet have believed. He is so gracious to us, he allows us to see as we get older, and as our pride tempts us to need those things to see. But today, Eva, today, Eva, he has baptized you. He has given you the new water and the new spirit, the new life in him. And Eva cannot see. Eva is the perfect example of faith for us today. She's not even three months old. She can't see in color. She can't really see a foot in front of her. She doesn't really know intellectually or emotionally processing what's going on today. But today, Eva is still baptized. Eva still believes. Eva has still heard the word. She still has a heart. She still has a soul. And she knows who her Savior is, just like she knows who her father and mother are. She knows who her Heavenly Father is and where her salvation comes from. And that is a gift, a real blessing, a real tangible gift for her that her Father does not hesitate to give. And so all of you today, dear saints, I urge you finally just to do this. Be like Eva. Be like a newborn and long for the pure spiritual milk that Christ has to give you today. Without the infant doing anything but simply receiving. Without the infant doing anything but taking her milk and growing and growing in stature. Be like newborns. Remember the last part of that 1 Peter 2, 2 verse. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it, you may grow up into your salvation. As you continue to eat and drink of the milk that your Lord has to give, as you continue to hear his word and receive his sacraments, you grow. Grow in those tangible gifts coming from Christ's death and resurrection, and your faith is nourished. Not doubting, not becoming unbelieving, not standing on the edge of your faith, but growing and growing and growing. Growing from weak to strong. Growing from being just on the milk to weaning and growing up to spiritual maturity, maturity, eating the meat and potatoes of the word that your father would have to give you. A strong faith. Not a strong faith just as an intellectual pursuit or as an emotional reckoning, but a strong faith built on the love of Christ, built on the life of Christ, namely by his passion and resurrection and thus his word and his sacraments that he gives to you Sunday in, Sunday out. And so be like a newborn today and drink it up. Drink up his word, drink up his sacraments, drink from the cup, and strengthen your faith in him. To him be all the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. We stand for the offertory. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, and we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us and enable us to show our thankfulness and lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, Prayer. Grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors and those who hold office in your church. That by their devoted service, faith may abound in your kingdom increase. Lord, in your mercy. Prayer. In your mercy, strengthen mission congregations, support them in challenging times. Make them steadfast, abounding in the work of the Lord, and let their faith and zeal for the gospel refresh and renew the witness of your people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. Prayer. Preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant wisdom to all who bear office in our land, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislator of Mississippi, 
and all those who make and minister and judge our laws. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Also be with those who serve in our military, especially Andrew, Nicholas, Ashland, Perry, Katie, Mitchell, Austin, and Mark. Lord, in your mercy, sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and, and enable their parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service, that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially Ann, Ed, Georgia, Tyler, Marlene, Christine, Ron, Marky, Larry, Ben, Katie, Reese, Frank, Betty, Paula, Walker, Tony, Morgan, Jacob, Marcy, Augustus, Brady, Samuel, Todd, Paul, Mary, Patricia, Ricky, Terry, John, Lori, Ken, Marjorie, Krista, Gail, Peggy, the family of Shelby, Sonny, John, Eileen, Rick, and Krista. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Bring consolation to those in sorrow, and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant this Father for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.